Hello and welcome to the next installment of the Inspectionary Whiteboard. For this one, we're going to do a follow-up on the last one, which was DMR reports and considerations. Um, and we're going to talk about executing the DMR project. There are a lot of important considerations in executing the project so that you get maximum value out of it and maximum leverage. Um, so let's start now with the, the typical damage mechanisms with routine. So obviously we need to have a corrosion specialist and that should be someone who's experienced in that type of unit that the damage mechanisms review is being done for. Um, and it might include a uh, contractor as well. And in fact, a lot of times the contractor will take the lead because the company corrosion specialist is busy doing a lot of other things, but then they're sitting in on this. Um, another one would be the unit inspector who has a lot of knowledge about the issues around the unit naturally. And someone not to be underestimated is the senior panel or board operator. That's the operator who knows what goes boom in the night, how things change over time, and they're the ones that are going to be really honest about what happens when nobody else is looking. Um, another one is the area or unit reliability manager or the reliability engineer, I should say, and, and they'll have input for what happens both from the fixed and rotating equipment perspectives. Um, an area maintenance rep and the area process engineer. So the process engineer knows a lot about what's going on with the process. Um, they're usually a shorter tenure in the unit, but the one who really has the good historical perspective and again, what happens um, with operations practices too is the operator. So those are all very important people to have. And in the last session, we talked about what kind of information is needed. You know, mechanical information, operating information, metallurgical materials information. So if you want to know more about that, refer back to the last installment in um, this series on the DMRs. Um, scope. So we got to scope out what equipment needs to be included in the damage mechanisms review, right? Pressure vessels, typically at a minimum, can be tanks as well, piping, rotating equipment, etc. So since we're going to be using this team and all that data that we've collected in the first installment, then let's take advantage of all that and use it to the maximum advantage and use it to understand what's happening to our equipment. So another thing that's really important is data and preparation for the site validation meeting. So up front, we've gotten all this data. We've got process flow diagrams. We've got process instrumentation diagrams. We understand what the uh, uh, circuits are, the corrosion circuits, the corrosion loops, and then going up, uh, what the systems are, and what the dynamics are in those systems, and how they impact equipment reliability and equipment integrity. That being said then, Let's switch over to this because this is really important and I've seen projects uh, have a lot of inefficiencies and I think a bit of ineffectiveness because sometimes the corrosion specialist doesn't prepare adequately prior to the site validate, validation meeting. So the corrosion specialist armed with all this data and other information should come to that meeting um, with their PFDs marked up and already defined at least the initial corrosion loops. Um, and that should not be done during the meeting. It should be done prior to the meeting. And during that meeting, as the whole team dives into the information as you step through the process flow diagrams, you may decide that there are times when we needed to to revise the corrosion loops, for instance. Maybe we need to add more loops, or maybe we can consolidate loops because there's really not a lot going on. Or we may have to dive into the PNIDs more at the circuit level to take a look at what's happening because they really deserve 
a higher level of scrutiny or more detail. And so at that point, we may add circuits. Um, and again, going back to the earlier information, uh, we are going to come up with a circuit list. And as part of that, we may actually decide during that time, again, to leverage this effort, we may decide to look at integrity operating windows. And for each of these pieces of equipment, are for these circuits, are for these loops, whatever is appropriate, again, depending upon the level of detail needed, we may define integrity operating windows, for example, chloride content, or maybe temperatures, and so forth and so on. And then what are the limits that we need to stay in between and make that part of the final report? And in the final report, we should include a narrative as, for instance, as we step through the unit, where are the areas of concern? Why? So that we can deal with those things. Again, um, where should we be looking for the damage? What does that mean? Um, and all of that good information in the narrative. We also create corrosion materials diagrams. So, uh, from the appropriate level, PFD level, PNID level is needed. Um, on that diagram, we're going to show what the different damage mechanisms are, what the corrosion rates are, what the cracking susceptibilities are, are the metallurgical and mechanical damage issues are. Uh, we're also going to correlate in there on that spreadsheet uh, what PNID or what PFD do those pieces of equipment belong to, operating temperatures, pressures, ASTM material grade and spec, materials of construction, and so forth. Since we're doing this, let's leverage it and let's make the maximum advantage out of the effort so we can get the greatest value from it in that final report. And excuse me, we've got a couple of notes here because I want to make sure I don't miss anything important. And remember, this relates to not just the fixed equipment, but it can relate to and should relate to the rotating equipment and since we have the reliability engineer for the unit in that meeting we can talk about those things and the report should also include as desired mitigation efforts what is recommended to mitigate the damage or address the damage and that's about it for this whiteboard discussion i hope you found it valuable thank you very much and remember to include your comments at the bottom of this tape. Thank you very much and have a good day.